Shannon Clute is the co-author with Richard Edwards of the forthcoming study of film noir entitled The Maltese Touch of Evil, Film Noir and Potential Criticism. The book is based in large part on a series of podcasts produced by the two authors out of the past investigating film noir, all of which can be found at noircast.net. He's also the author of The Mint Condition, a Chandler-esque mystery of greed and political corruption that was one of the 10 semifinalists for Court TV's The Next Great Crime Writer Contest. He has a PhD in Romance Studies from Cornell University, and oh yeah, he just happens to work at Turner Classic Movies. Please welcome Shannon Clute. Thank you. Is this? It is. It is on. It is on. Move there. All right. So, Dr. Clute. <laughs> How does one? That's an informal way to begin. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. How does one get to film noir from Romance Studies? Slowly. <laughs> um, it, you know, it's, film was always an interest. Um, I always worked film into my literature courses whenever possible. Uh, when there were literature surveys, I always tried to do film, filmic adaptations of great novels along with the works that we were studying. So it had always sort of been a part of what I did. Um, but when I left academia, uh, before leaving academia actually, I had started a series of podcasts, which for those of you who are not familiar with the term, are essentially um, audio programs distributed by internet. So they vary, initially there was a sort of do-it-yourself aesthetic that was very amateur and a lot of people used it sort of like audio blogging. And then some people would started to produce these shows uh, to a greater extent. We were, as far as I know, the first academics to do a scholarly podcast series that was really um, analysis driven. And we started a film analysis podcast series called Out of the Past Investigating Film Noir, uh, looking into great films, noir and neo-noir. And uh, kept started that actually in 2005. So it was a fairly early podcast series. And then started a second show called uh, Behind the Black Mask Mystery Writers Revealed, uh, where we had many great uh, modern writers of noir, Megan Abbott, who's a friend of uh, some folks in the audience, uh, and uh, Ken Bruin, uh, George Pelicanos, Michael Connolly. And these folks were gracious enough to join us on the show and talk about their latest work in detail. So these two things, the, the literature and the film, had always dovetailed. And uh, I had been working on these projects for a number of years. Decided to make a break to uh, pursue fiction writing and uh, quickly ended up painting houses <laughs> and um, uh, had continued the work on the podcast and continued the research around film noir as we were building towards this manuscript. And um, it turned out that somebody at Turner Classic Movies was a fan of the podcast. We became friends. My wife also had a friend who had worked there who was a fan of the work that we did and helped uh, with that transition. And I got in as an editor and worked uh, on a temporary basis for a while and have uh, moved into uh, a full-time position where I'm in the brand activation group, but I'm primarily in charge of print publications. So, so tell us about the genesis of the podcast. Whose crazy idea was it to take <laughs> academia and put it on the internet where who knows who is going to listen? Both. Both of ours. Um, you know, Rich Edwards and I sometimes share a brain, which is, if you know Rich Edwards, is a frightening thing in and of itself, <laughs> um, to share a brain with that guy. He's, he's scatterbrained. He's brilliant. He, it's funny. When we prepare for a podcast, we see how different our styles are because I will tend to script a point or two if I consider the point crucial. I'll take extensive viewing notes. I really sit down and, and prepare. And Rich will watch a film and start to riff. And I always say, Rich is the jazz musician of the two of us. Mm -hmm. And it's, it leads to some brilliant insights. It leads to a lot of, of post-production cleanup. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and we're, we're Mutt and Jeff. We're a great combination. And um, we both had this idea. It was actually Rich's idea to uh, take on a podcast series. Rich was a professor of digital media, primarily, whose background is film studies. And he had, back in the day, wanted to be one of the early academic bloggers. And it always felt like he'd sort of missed his chance when blogging was just taking off. He knew it was going to be the next hot topic. He didn't pursue it. And he'd already sort of had a, an eye to podcasting. And then it was really just an act of fate in a great noir fashion that brought the, the whole thing together. I was walking down the hall at St. Mary's College of California where Rich and I were both new faculty. And the dean came walking by me and stopped and said, you're it. 
And of course, she's my dean, so I said, OK, before saying I'm what? Um, and probably in retrospect, that was the, the wrong sequence. Um, I should have said what before I said OK. But what was um, actually that I was going to host a Q&A with two actors from the film Napoleon Dynamite, which, yeah, it was a, it was a fun film. And Kip and Pedro were there for the screening. Um, Aaron Rule and uh, uh, Ephraim Ramirez, I couldn't come up with his first name. Uh, nice guys, both of them. And the dean simply said, you've got to host this Q&A. The person we had in mind has kind of canceled. And I said, great, win." And she said, in about four hours. <laughs> so I'd so seen the film once. And if I remember, I, I ran home and, and you know, hit the video store on the way and picked it up again, watched it, and got over to the theater. And that night conducted two sessions, a Q&A before, and they had two, two screenings and hung out with the guys in between. And Rich was there, and he and I had already talked about our shared you know, love of film noir at new faculty orientation that, that it had come up. And uh, he saw me that night in the audience, and he said, OK, we've got to do this podcast together. He said, this is exactly the sort of conversation I want to have, but I want to have a more critical conversation. And as the idea evolved, what we realized was that it was an important potential mechanism because as anyone who's involved with academia knows, the academic publishing machine moves very slowly. And new faculty are in a kind of a strange double bind because anymore the, the expectations for publication go up, the backlog at academic presses also goes up. So unless you come out with a dissertation that's essentially ready to go to press and you have a couple article ideas either scripted or ready to script immediately, you're going to have a hard time at the third, fourth, fifth, and you know the tenure year review hitting those benchmarks for publication. So we wanted to make the argument that um, new media could be serious forms of scholarly publication, that peer warranting was often as valuable as, as uh, a priori peer review that uh, things like Wikipedia had proved the value of peer warranting and that it was a mechanism that had to be tested uh, more thoroughly for, uh, for scholarly publication. And that was the impetus behind it. We never thought we'd achieve an audience. I mean, when you set out as two scholars going, let's do a scholarly podcast on film noir, you don't really, you're not doing this because you think it's going to be popular. And we'll sell it to ABC. Yeah, right. That's it. Yeah, it'll, it would make a great lifetime miniseries. And um, the irony is, uh, and the moral of the story is, you do things that you're passionate about, and if you really put a lot of effort into them, you somehow achieve the audience. We, uh, at last count, I think, have had almost 400,000 downloads of episodes of Out of the Past, which boggles our mind how there are 400,000 people worldwide that want to listen to two academics discuss films noir in, you know, in the terms we want to talk about them. We don't, we don't try to be... Um, you know, populist film criticism. We don't really pander for the masses. We just want to talk about these movies. And um, it's kind of been a strange and fun experiment. It's opened some doors. And how did that argument go with uh, the administration? Well, neither of us is in academia currently. <laughs> <laughs> So I think it's a mixed bag success-wise. Actually, you know, uh, the tide has turned. And um, the MLA published some guidelines for, uh, for evaluating and valuing uh, digital scholarship in the last year or two. Um, Rich, has, uh, Rich is actually uh, still in the academic game in, in, in various capacities. And uh, I think that there is a, a more appreciation for it. There are some other exciting developments where we've actually gotten funding to start an, uh, um, kind of another experiment in academia, which is a open access and open peer review academic journal that's going to be uh, starting in the fall of 2011 that we're calling Open Canister, which is going to be an open access, open peer review film studies journal. So uh, some good things have continued to come of it.